Thank you, John. How do you fancy a bit of honey? Bit of honey? Yeah, of course you do. Now, in Blue Peter today, they'll be putting George into hibernation. There's also the BBC's first school choir girl of the year. I've met her this morning. She's lovely. And also, what do you think about Daleks? You will move ahead of us and follow my directions. This way. Immediately. I said immediately. Fire! <gasps> All right. We'll come up from behind the sofa now. <laughs> that was the first full appearance of the Daleks, those alien creatures that have terrified Doctor Who over the years. They made their first appearance 23 years ago in 1963. And along with the Doctor, they're definitely the most famous characters to have come from the series. And if you're a Dalek fan, there's a treat in store because any moment now, they're going to be invading the studio. I just hope we survive to tell the tale. Hello. And I've got a question for you. See if you can remember which episode you think these Daleks are from. Like they were fighting each other there. But you see, Mark's question was in fact a trick question. That wasn't from Doctor Who at all. That was from a homemade video. And all those Daleks you saw there are here in the studio now. Exterminate! 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 We will annihilate! 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 But you see, things aren't quite what they seem because all those Daleks, well, all these Daleks, in fact, are only 30 centimetres high. They're, they're models. And they've all been made by a bloke who got the modelling bug when he was about eight years old. And uh, he's turned that bug into a full-time job. He's called Stuart Evans, and along with a couple of mates of his called Mark Dando and Simon Lidgard, that's uh, how they sit under the table here and animate all these Daleks on top of the table. Do you want to come out, Stuart? Yeah, sure. Stop hiding from the Daleks. <laughs> That's very impressive, that bit of film, Thank then. you very much. How did it all start for you? Oh, it all started when I was about six. Doctor Who came on from the, uh, from the first, and I was immediately I was captivated mm. by it. I loved the Daleks. Always wanted to own one and make one in anything, paper mache, you name it. When did you make Just your first one? Uh, that was out of uh, building blocks when I was about uh, four, I think. Mm. I know, about seven. Me nan helped me. And what about one of these ones, the first uh, one? This one? Well, it all came about because a uh, strange opening, but uh, I had a job I was pretty bored in, yeah. and so I decided to make sounds stupid really but making a, a, my own Dalek and uh, I was in the civil service at the time and it was like a, a release of uh, tension and things so this was made originally out of this is the original one I made yeah. this was made out of plastic all these balls here are anorak toggles <laughs> and they're actually sawn down the middle yeah. um, this is my trusty civil service pen I had in the MOD and that's cut up with a bit of piano wire. You didn't make it to shoot your bus, did you? No, uh, no. no. <laughs> so how did the BBC get interested? Um, it happened, uh, the BBC had a uh, convention at Longleat mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago, the 20th anniversary of Doctor Who, and I took this with me. I didn't think I'd uh, have any interest, really, just, you know, just for fun. And somebody expressed an interest, and from there on, a uh, long story, but eventually I got introduced to the BBC and I approached the BBC. So let's show me how you an animate them for, the, for that video we've just seen. Because sure. these two are wobbling about the back end. Yeah, these are moving like bilio. Look at that. Well, if I just take this one out from the operator beneath... Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit like a glove puppet then, the, you operate it oh, from It's exactly like a glove puppet, yes. There's the battery, yeah. that's worked on a catch. So that, that does the head, I see. That works the lights there. This little toggle here, if we can find it, yep. That uh, just come disconnected. Never mind. That moves, <laughs> that moves that up and down, or did. And this moves the yeah, plunger. That's the in plunger. Out. The old sink plunger. Clean yeah. out the sink. Yeah. Yeah. How do you get the, the ray gun to work, the exterminator? Yeah, I'll show bit. you. The, the ray gun exterminator is actually hidden from view. It's a piece of plastic pipe feeding the back. This is all just put on for show. Yeah. Uh, this is a compressed air can. And by very carefully pressing this. Oh, very good. Do you get that? 
and a frozen finger. Very clever, that. There's something over here that I, I think even I could operate, which is not uh, too technical. It was the way you moved four Daleks along at once, using a, a plank of wood. Mm -hmm. And to get the first one to twist, you've got it on a kind of um, pulley system. Yep, with a string. I'll tell you what, even the smallest one is still giving me the shivers. Just to give the Daleks a bit more movement, um, Stuart has constructed specially designed remote control Daleks. We've got one on the floor here, so if we just get it to move around a bit, forward and back, and get the dome to spin round and everything. It's great, you can almost hear the voice. Oh, no, 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 no. And if you can see how it works, on the left, if you press that up, it goes forward. If you press it back, it goes back. And then on the side, on the right-hand side, that makes the dome go round. So if you do them all at once, like this, Thank you. Right, on the side as well. <laughs> Don't point it at me. <laughs> I'll tell you what was really good about the, your homemade video was the explosions. Can we do an explosion? Certainly, yes, yes. So you've got it set up there. Yeah, I, I have to one. point out at this point that uh, Oops, excuse these me. guys are professionals. So if you get ideas of trying to explode your own Dalek at home, don't. Leave it to the guys who know what they're doing. Are we ready? Nearly. You do the countdown then. OK. Nice Three, one. two, one. Wait a minute, wait. Three, two, one. And Pete. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like November the 5th, aren't they? Now, because Stuart's models were so authentic, the BBC asked him if he could use them in a, an actual episode of Doctor Who. They appeared in Revelations of the Daleks when Davros led the Daleks against Orsini's. And one of the little Daleks blew themselves up when they got a power overload. You are old, Orsini! Your reflexes have gone! Do you think you're the first to try and kill me? to think they're just 30 centimetres high, but as Mark quite rightly said, still frightening. And thank you very much to Amy and Jack Dow from Tackley in Oxfordshire, who sent us a picture of a Dalek that their father made for them. Now, Amy is standing in front of it, and she's six and a half, and it is towering above her. So I don't think I would like to come face to ray gun with that. Well, we hear about a lot of treasure trails on Blue Peter, and we hear about a lot of detective stories too. But I don't think we've heard about a story quite as extraordinary as the one that Simon investigated deep in the heart of the Worcestershire countryside. This has managed to break the UK free-falling parachute record. Happy birthday, <laughs> Bessie Stocks. Goodbye. Bessie Stocks, ninety today. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> I don't think anything went wrong today, actually. Oh, no! It's a Dalek! Don't point it at me! Point it down there! Thank you very much. Right, we're back tomorrow. We've got Jimbo in the jet sets at 3.55. Oh, Chelsea, get under the table, Chelsea. And then at 4 o'clock, there's the Chuckle Hounds, which is followed at 5 past 4 by... Captain Caveman! Yep. And then at 4.15, there's Beat the Teachers, a brand new series of record breakers at 4.30, so don't miss that. At 5 o'clock, we've news round, and 10 past 5, there's Grange Hill. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Coming soon, the moving story of Kate and her missing sister, Emma. Face facts, Kate.